Now with Nigeria's unemployment figures at an all-time high of over 23% and more when the underemployment figures are also included, it is expedient that the gap between industry skills and majority of the Nigerian youth are empowered for career and entrepreneurial success. Now joining me is Molade Adeni. She is the CEO of West Africa Vocational Education in Nigeria, which is focused on leveling the playing field for young people to access the skills and opportunities to be employed. Thank you so much for joining me in the studio. Thank you for having me. It's a pleasure to be yes, here. Yes, certainly. <laughs> now, we are well aware of the situation of unemployment here in Nigeria. Mm -hmm. However, the good thing is you try to equip these young Nigerians mm -hmm. and Africans, as it were, mm -hmm. bridging the gap between what is necessary, which is the industry skills and, you know, the gap therein. So what exactly would you say you have found working with these Nigerians? Um, okay, so I think um, I'll start off by saying that I think you're actually a little bit conservative with your 23%. <laughs> the number is probably a lot higher than, higher than that. that. And the statistics also show that more than 50% of the population in, let's just talk about Nigeria alone, but also Africa is young people under the age of 25. So this is where the bulk of the people are. Now you have employers who have jobs, you know, they have vacancies and they're looking for people to fill these vacancies. Yet they're saying that they just can't find the young people to fill the jobs. True. When you now ask them, what are the things that you're looking for? What are the things that, you're, that are missing? What's this skills mismatch mm -hmm. um, that you're talking about? Employers um, complain a lot about the 21 first century soft skills. So yes, I want to employ an accountant, but I also need to employ an accountant that has a little bit of emotional intelligence, that has um, great communication skills, both mm -hmm. verbal and non-verbal, and even written communication. And employers are finding that these, these softer side of things are the things that are really, really missing. Um, on the other hand, you have these young people who are ready to work, they are willing to work, but they're not aware that they do not have these skills. So let's even talk about the people who have gone to school, graduates. Mm -hmm. um, our universities are amazing, or our high institutions, they're good at giving you the hard skills, the technical skills, the know-how to be an accountant, as an example, the numbers. But we overlook the softer side of, of, of these skills, communication, customer service, um, empathy, emotional intelligence, teamwork, problem solving, critical thinking. So what we do at WAVE is try to bridge this gap. So we have a three-week intensive program where we bring young people in between the ages of 18 and 35, and all we're teaching are the soft skills. How do you apply them? They're activity-based teachings, and we, we hope that at the end of our program, employers, we now present this, we call them job-ready skills. So we now mm -hmm. present this young people to the employers to say, now they have these softer skills, you need to then support them with whatever job um, required skills that would help them excel on, on the job. So, so it's those, that's where we really see um, the skills mismatch. And for businesses, I know that you've had, you know, your bit in the pharmaceutical industry and the rest of it. Uh, what are the economic, what would be the economic impact of a lack of this skill on people's businesses? Um, so what happens is um, businesses want to grow. Um, a business owner wants to be able to, so let, let's use a retail store for instance. You want to have one store and maybe have two or maybe have three. But part of the problem is finding the right talent to be able to fit into your one store so that you can now you know, take yourself out of that business and move into another store. So if we cannot quickly begin to upskill people, um, especially in the service sector, especially in the hospitality sector, where things like customer service and communication is important, Very what important. happens is you're unable to grow because you find yourself as, a, as the owner, as the CEO, you have to be on ground all the time because you're not sure what your people are going to mm. do to the customers. Will the customer come back tomorrow? Um, will you still have a business? But if we begin to um, equip people with these skills, people begin to understand understand the importance of these skills, then whether you're there or not, your business grows and you can move on and, um, and grow your business in, in many other ways as, um, as well. All right, so what can we do in terms of sustainable job creation here in Nigeria particularly? So that's a very tough question because I don't know that everybody will get employed. First of all, I don't know that there's enough white Honest collar truth. jobs <laughs> for people, um, especially as the population is growing. I don't know that there's enough white collar jobs. We need to start thinking about other ways of employment. Um, soft skills, what is important about soft skills or 21st century skills, as I like to call them, is it transcends any kind of industry, whether I'm self-employed um, or whether I'm working for someone. So how do we begin to empower people to, be, to run 
to start their own businesses and mm -hmm. run it successfully. What you will find as well is people who are entrepreneurs, people who are running their own businesses, part of the reasons why they can't grow is maybe they don't have some of these softer skills. So they're not able to relate to people in, in a way that is meaningful enough to cause them business growth. So I know about my sector. But if I can't communicate with you, how will I, you know, translate that um, customer into, into more business? Mm -hmm. So it's very important that we need to open up, start opening up more doors, start encouraging entrepreneurship, um, but empowering them with the right skills, with the right ta tax in incentives are also important as well, but also with the right funding so that they can begin to start businesses and grow and they can start employing people. The more new businesses open, the more they can um, have access to this young population who are looking for work and we can hopefully start truly solving the problem of unemployment. Now there's one thing, it's one thing to have the skill, another mm -hmm. to monetize it. Mm -hmm. And you see a number of young people say to you, oh, I can do this, I can do that. Translate it to, Either the green back or the Nigerian, you know, <laughs> Naira. What's your take on this, really? So and what can be done? Interesting. I was having a conversation <laughs> with someone earlier this week, and we were talking about how, um, as a business owner, I'm very, I know exactly what my business idea is. It's in my head. But when it comes to selling that business idea to someone, some of us really struggle very hard. It's a tough struggle, <laughs> I tell you. Um, and I find the biggest thing that has worked um, for me is the art of storytelling. And it's an art that you just have to learn. Thank God for um, online learning these days. You don't even need to pay money. Just go on all of these online learning courses and look for what it means to, to tell a story. And those are the things that pull at people's heartstrings. Um, how do we begin to um, get people to improve themselves where they are today, to get to where they want to be tomorrow at very low cost, and it's available. When I'm able to tell you a story, I'm able to tell you the story of how this problem that I am trying to solve and the solution that I have will help you get to, will help us solve that problem. You begin to pay attention and you begin to listen. But the lack of being able to communicate that mm -hmm. effectively mm -hmm. sometimes is the reason why um, we're not able to monetize what we have. Anybody will only put their money for, to, to somewhere where they either see value in of terms course. of a return to them or even something that hits my heartstrings. You're trying to solve a problem that I can actually see the impact relate it is having on it. lives. Mm. I can relate with it. I'm more likely to part, part to with my money than if you just present a case and you, you really don't have any, you know, uh, any, anything to say about it. So I say all of that to say elevator pitches. How do you just get your message across in the most succinct, but also in the most relevant way that pulls mm -hmm. people to, mm -hmm. to you? How can young women and girls start to be more involved? Um, when you say involved, involved in leadership, okay. involved in ensuring that businesses grow, their businesses get you know to where they want it to be, essentially. Um, so I mean, I'll say this for young young girls and and women, but really for everybody, just begin to lead where you are. Um, don't wait till you get to that leadership position. Exactly, mm -hmm. whatever opportunity you find you find yourself faced with today wherever you are today how do you begin to stick your head out for opportunities um, when people see that you you have something small and you do it so well it's easy to give you the next thing but a lot of times we're all waiting for that big thing to show to show ourselves but how do you just whatever it is that you have the opportunity for today just take it do it to the best of your ability and that will open up doors to other opportunities. And also, put yourself forward for things. So I'll give a, a classic example. They're putting together a planning committee in your office for, I don't know, um, for the next annual meeting or something like that. Nominate yourself. Say, I want to be on this committee. Don't I want to, to head a particular part. Don't wait to be picked. Um, nominate yourself. Go in there and give it all that you can. Somebody is watching. Somebody is seeing those leadership um, skills. And when the leadership opportunity comes, they would remember you for that which you have done. So let's just, I would say, start start from wherever you are today and just, don't you wait. know, and, and, and don't wait to be handed everything. Thank you so much, Maladi, for your time. Because of time, this is all we can have. But thank you so much for joining <laughs> It was a pleasure. Thank so you so much for having you. me. Happy International Women's Happy Day. Happy International Women's Day to you, too. <laughs>